Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills here with a mesh install for the 80 series Toyota Land Cruiser. Today I'll show you how I built this all black grill with retro emblem. It all started with this early model grill that has the center bar. This mod will also work just fine for the late model grill, which I'll show you later on when it's completed. After the grill has been removed from the vehicle, it's time to get started. The first step is to cut the bars around the perimeter to remove the center of the grill. Just be sure to preserve a fair bit of the plastic around the lower and side mounting tabs. To do the cutting, I'll grab my open-ended saw blade and get to work. The vertical bars I'll try to cut fairly close to flush to the edge without digging into the edge. Of course, the exception to that will be the lower mounting tab. In that area, I'll cut around a little higher than needed and come back to trim it down later. Here's a closer look at how my cut looks on that lower edge. Similarly, on the side mounting tabs, I want to keep a lot of the surrounding material so that there's some strength to it when we're done. I'm cutting at a slight tilt so that I'm cutting into more of the thick bar than the tab itself. Now, of course, this will be a little different for late model owners since they don't have the big bar here, but it's a similar principle that follows nonetheless. From there, I'll take a top-down cutting approach, getting close to the edge, but staying maybe an eighth of an inch away so that I don't cut into the edge itself. At this point, the side mounting tab should still be attached to the outer frame, but free from the bulk of the inner area. It's time to knock out the rest of these connecting bars and get the center out. There's just a handful on the upper sides and top edge. While we are preserving the lower and side mounting tabs, the one on the top edge needs to be removed. I'll just simply make a cut right through the tab with the saw, and that will be the last cut on this step. The center part should be freed up now and can be lifted out like so and thrown away. Here's how my grill frame looks like now. This is a pretty rough cut, but it's got it where it counts. The mounting tabs are still in place, but there's a few things to tackle in the upcoming steps. The tabs need to be refined, and the frame needs to be sanded, as well as the back edge needing to be trimmed down. Now's the time to change tools, and I'm going to grab my Dremel and equip their number 543 cutting and shaping wheel. This is where a bit of patience and attention to detail is needed. The end goal here is to keep the full thickness of the back of the tab while trimming off the surrounding plastic that covers the front. This takes multiple angles of approach and a steady hand to accurately get correct cuts needed to make this look right. It's important not to cut the tab off, so just be mindful of where the cutting wheel is at all times. Next up is a similar cut on the side tabs and I found it much easier to get these cuts from the back of the grill by flipping it around like so. From here, the cut I'm doing is pretty simple and easy to do, but keep an eye on it to make sure that you're not cutting in too deep. The tricky part here is getting the cut that's flush near the tab. I've got an educated guess as to where it needs to be trimmed, but I'm also flying blind a little as well. This particular section might be best to trim conservatively first and then slowly refine it down with small revisions later. Okay, now that that's done, here's how the side of the grill is looking. This looks pretty rough, so let's start to clean up some of this excess plastic to make trimming of the depth of the grill a little easier. I'll just use the top of the shaping wheel to shave down the remaining plastic that's protruding from the edge. Please note that I'm getting this relatively flat. I'm not trying to cut past the edge at all though. Having access to an electric or pneumatic sander can speed this up quite a bit. I made short work of this with some 80 grit sanding discs on a cordless grinder, but it can be done by hand if a tool like this is not available. Afterward, I also cut off this little tab that was on the top edge, making it flush with the rest of the grill. With that done, I'll grab some low adhesion masking tape that's exactly three quarters of an inch wide. We'll be using this as a guide on where to trim the grill. The tape should be placed on the inner edge, up close to the front face, right before the curve of the grill. In short, when we're finished, we want the leftover part of the grill to be three quarters inch depth from the front all the way around. To get around some of the curves, I needed to break up the tape into smaller sections to make it around the corner. Obviously, I'm not going to tape over the side mounting tabs. Those need to stay exactly where they are. 
The lower mounting tab, on the other hand, will need a little bit of trimming on the sides, so I'll mask off that area on where not to cut. You can make it wider than needed and trim it back narrower later if you're not sure on how wide to make it. Now on to the cutting part. I'm using my Dremel along with the cutting and shaping wheel attachment again and just cutting close to where the tape line ends. Patience and a steady hand are keys to success here when looking to make some clean straight cuts. If you're not familiar with these types of mods, it might be best to back away from the cut line a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. That way, you'll have a little bit of margin for error in case the cut is made a little bit deeper than it should be. Any waviness with the cuts can be sanded out later, but it's best to just make some straight cuts initially so that minimal sanding is needed later. On the back edge of the grill that we're working on, there's some connecting material that extends to the front. This needs to be trimmed down so that the edge that was just cut can be released from the grill frame. The side cut on this early model grill is easy and can be knocked out like so. With the late model version, owners will need to cut a little bit further towards the tab than what I'm showing here because the side didn't have the big bar. For both early and late models, the cut below the side mount tab should be about the same. It's a tricky angle of approach and be sure not to damage the mounting tab during these steps. Next, I'll go for the lower edge and again using patience at a steady hand, I'll work my way over to the lower mounting tab and stop just before hitting that tape line. After the rough cuts are made, there will likely be some burnt on bits that are stuck to the cut edge. These can usually be picked off by hand once they've cooled off just a little bit. This will give us a clear look at what refinements are needed. For me, the top edge needed a little extra work and I just lightly glided the top of the shaping wheel along the edge to whittle the edge down to be straighter than before. I also needed to push these little connectors back just a little further. I'll clean up this one little last spot and I think the top edge will be good to go. Once satisfied with the cuts, I'll remove the tape line and throw it away. Here's how my grill is looking at this stage. Overall, it's starting to take shape. We have a good consistent depth on the frame and we've kept all the mounting tabs pretty solid. Early model owners, you'll want to stick around for a second for this next step. Late model owners, go ahead and skip to about 8 minutes and 10 seconds in. To even out the spot where the center bar was on the early models, I'll grab some 1 8 inch wide pinstriping tape. This is being used to fade the naturally shallow area where the bar was to the deeper depth of the upper edge. There isn't much that needs to be trimmed here. You can see that it's just a little section that needs to be faded. Even though it's a small detail, it's an important part of making this look right. Once done, the tape line can be removed and thrown away. It's now time to move on to the sanding of the inside edge of where the frame was gutted. There's a couple of high spots from the old bars and some 180 grit paper will make short work of getting these areas flat. If you wanted to keep the front of the grill frame chrome, then it's best to just tape off the finished surface before performing this step. I had planned to color swap this frame, so I'm going to start working the paint and chrome off. Pneumatic tools such as a dual action sander will speed this up considerably if you have access to them. Here's how my frame looks with a mostly sanded inside edge. Masking off the front and painting the inner edge gray or black would be the next step if you wanted to keep the chrome front edge. To color swap it to black, I went ahead and stripped off as much of the chrome as I could from the whole grill. It's hard to get into all of the spots, but this is mostly stripped to my liking. To start the paint job, I'll primer it up using the Spraymax 1K Self-Etch Primer Filler shown here. This goes on very evenly and dries quickly. Mine here looks really good and I don't think any additional sanding or repair is needed. Next up, I'll grab some Spraymax 1K trim paint in matte black and apply a couple coats. And look at how this turned out. The cut edge looks really clean and I think that this new black paint job is super sleek. Wow, this looks really great so far and we don't even have the mesh piece in yet. Speaking of which, here's a look at the mesh piece that we have available on our website. This is pre-cut and pre-bent specifically for the 80 series Toyota Land Cruisers. 
All of the right cuts and bends have been made in all of the right spots. And this mesh piece is ready to install right out of the box after your stock grill has been modified. Now, there is a little bit of a trick to angling this into place. From the back of the grill, and with the bent tabs on the mesh piece facing forward, slide one side into position and then flex the mesh like so to get the other side in. At this point, the mesh will be resting on the lower tab, and that area can be gently pulled down to let the mesh pass forward. Let me flip this around so you can see how the grill should look at this point. The mesh seems to be resting fairly flush to the back edge of the grill. Overall, I'm pretty excited to see how this turns out. So let's get the mesh bonded to the grill so that we can get it back on the vehicle. Let's flip this back around and grab a few things to help with the install. I like to use some cable ties and foam for installs like these. The cable ties will help hold the mesh piece firmly in place, while the foam can help with protecting the finish of the grill from the tension of the ties. I'm just simply looping the tail end of the ties through the front of the mesh and looping the head around the back of the mesh and fastening them together. It's especially important on this lower edge not to distort the shape of the grill. We want that lower edge to be relatively flat and it should butt up against the bent edge of the mesh quite well. On these earlier models, it's probably a good idea to draw the sides in a little closer to give the back of the grill a good amount of mesh to attach to. This is not as important on the late model version as there will be more material on the grill frame than shown here. While these ties need to be firmly attached, I'm making sure not to over tighten anything here. The mesh piece just needs to not move and sit flat up against the back edge of the grill. The last section for me is the upper edge, and this is by far the easiest area to do because it's also the strongest section. With all of the ties on, it's best to double check your work, so let's flip this around and check for any gaps. If you're unsure about how level the lower edge is, this is a good time to mock it up on the bumper to make sure that everything's good to go. I feel like mine is about as accurate as I can get it, so it's time to move on with bonding these together after cutting the tail ends of the ties off and throwing them away. To bond the mesh and grill together, I recommend a two-part plastic epoxy like PlyoGrip. Other two-part epoxies can work, but this is just the one that I like. Alternatively, on a budget, automotive goop can work for this install as well, but it's much harder to use for a project like this due to the cure time and runniness of it. When it comes to applying the plyo grip, I'm just trying to get this in and around the mesh openings while being mindful not to spill any of this through the front. On early models, this lower edge is much thinner than the late models, and it's important not to build the adhesive up too high. There isn't much clearance on the bumper on either of the late or the early models, so try not to add too much thickness in this area. After applying some of the plyo grip, I like to use a small brush to even out the application and ensure full coverage. This stuff cures fairly quick, and while I'm not rushing to get it done, it's important to be mindful that there's only a few minutes of workability available. Once it sets up, this will give us a good firm bond between mesh and grill. For me, I like to wait about 30 to 45 minutes when using the Plyo Grip Plastic Repair Number 3 for it to cure. And afterward, I'll come back and cut off the ties and throw them away along with the protective foam pieces that were protecting the finish. The mesh install is now complete. Let's flip it around and see how it turned out. Wow, this looks great. The mesh transforms that old looking grill into something slightly more modern and the chrome to black swap is a big departure from what we're used to seeing on these. This looks like a seamless blend between mesh and grill frame. I can't see any remnants of the installation that's behind the frame. Of course, in addition to this early model grill that I've been working on, I also made a late model grill too. Here's how the same type of build looks for that one. These mesh pieces and grills are not interchangeable in between early and late models, so please be aware of that when doing this mod. Now, back to the grill that we've been working on. While this plain grill looks amazing, I want to take it to the next level with a retro Toyota emblem. This will look especially good for late model builds. In order to install the emblem, there's a little modification needed. On the back of these emblems, there's three mounting studs, 
These don't line up with anything on the mesh and aren't practical to try to use. These mounting points will need to be cut off and the Dremel along with the cutting wheel is a great tool to use for that job. Once the emblem is flat on the back, I'll try to eyeball getting this thing centered up. And after I think I have it close, I'll grab a small ruler and start to nudge it back and forth until I have it equally spaced top to bottom. Let's go ahead and mark that with a piece of tape to preserve the alignment. Now we've got half of this centered up and next up I'll try and get the left to right alignment set up. I'm using the same technique of nudging the emblem back and forth and checking with a ruler again. Once it's equal distance from each side, then I'll grab some more tape and use that as a marker. This is all squared up now and it's time to mount it. Let's flip the emblem face down and I'll grab my plyo grip again and dispense out some epoxy within the inner areas of the back of the lettering. I'm not using a ton of material here because I don't want any to spill out the sides. To even this out, I'll grab a small brush and fill in any of the gaps in the center area. Now it's time to put this in place and let it cure. Thanks to the tape guideline, I know exactly where to place this emblem. And after it's in place, then the tape can be removed. Watch the emblem for a little while just to make sure it doesn't shift around at all. If the mesh is curved forward a bit, you might want to consider weighing the emblem down with some sockets or a wrench just to make sure that it stays in place. After it's cured, then we're all done, and this grill build is completely ready for reinstallation back on the vehicle. I just can't get over how awesome this grill is looking. And I know you want to see a couple pictures of how this looks installed, so here we have it. This is what it looks like on an 80 series Land Cruiser. What a huge difference this makes for being a relatively simple mod with basic tools. This is a great project for a weekend build and it doesn't break the bank. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope you liked it and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And thanks for watching.